So we all love to learn songs. It's a big reason of why you probably picked up guitar in the first place. You, like a lot of us, grew up listening to your favorite bands, your favorite artists, and thought, I want to do that. I want to be able to play songs, write songs, play along with my favorite records. It's a huge part of why we continue to play guitar and practice and learn. But when you learn a new song, how well do you actually know it? Yeah, you might be able to play the right chords in the right time, but do you actually fully know the song inside and out? If you're anything like me, the answer is probably no. Very few songs that I've learned over the years have I truly mastered inside and out, to where I can play them anywhere on the fretboard in different styles with different chord voicings, being able to play in different situations, maybe with another guitarist or a singer or a full band. And when it comes to learning songs on guitar, there's so much to be gained by actually understanding what's going on in the music and being able to apply it to the fretboard. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to really learn songs, how to really learn any song on the guitar. These are some of the techniques and the methods that I like to use whenever I'm trying to learn a new song, whether it's for a gig or even just playing at home. And a lot of the stuff we're gonna cover in today's video, I actually go into more detail in my video course, Fretboard Fundamentals, which you can currently get for 30% off via the link in the description box down below. This is a video course dedicated to giving you a complete and comprehensive understanding of the fretboard and everything that goes into it. This is a music theory course for guitar players. So if you're interested, you can get 30% off via the link in the description box down below. So let's jump in and take a look at the song we're gonna be learning today. by the Beatles is not only an incredible legendary song, but it's a really great song and chord progression to start with when it comes to learning the techniques and learning different ways of approaching a song like this. This is an incredibly simple chord progression. We're in the key of C and we're gonna play C major, one chord, G major, five chord, A minor, six chord, and F major, the four chord. And when it comes to learning songs, you could play those chord voicings in that order and play along with the song and you've basically got it. There's a bridge where some of the chords change around, but all in all, you could sit at home or around a campfire or whatever and play those chords in order and you've learned Let It Be. But there's so much more that can be learned from a song like this if we just take a little bit deeper look. So the first step is taking these simple triads and trying to move them around to different parts of the neck. If we're in our open cowboy chord position here. You can try playing the bar chord version of these chords. This is really great practice if you're new to guitar and you're trying to learn bar chords, taking a simple song like this that uses open voiced cowboy chords and transitioning them to bar chords is a really great exercise to help you transition between the fifth string root shape here on C major to the sixth string root shape here on G major to A minor and to F. So in its most basic form, that is the song. But what if we go one step deeper? So for the next level of truly understanding and learning a song, we're gonna take a look at what's actually being played, not just the right chords, but the right voicings. So if you listen to McCartney's piano on Let It Be, which unfortunately I can't play here, he's playing these voicings, these inversions. Now on the piano, there's root notes that are an octave lower than what I can do here on guitar, but for the guitar's sake, let's add the root notes in. We get this. Now, if you're not familiar, inversions are a really simple concept. Essentially, all we're doing is taking the chord voicing, the triad, and instead of the root note being the lowest note, we're gonna change that to a different note from the chord. For example, on the piano voicing, the first chord C is actually a second inversion, which means the fifth of the chord is the lowest note, like this. Then we have a root position G major here. Same thing, root position six chord, A minor here. And then a root position F major seven into A major six. 
But those obviously aren't the only inversions you can use. And now we get to the point where we can start to kind of change things a little bit, maybe suit them a little bit more to your personal style as a guitar player or an artist. Let's say I wanted to play this in a lower position. I wanted it to sound more like a baritone instead of a piano. I might try these inversions here. Interestingly, these are the exact same voicings that McCartney uses on piano, just an octave lower. I have a C major second inversion here with the fifth of the chord G in the bass. And I'm only gonna play the bottom three strings, the lowest strings, because again, I want this to sound like a really low baritone guitar, even though I'm in standard tuning. Next is our root position G major, but I'm only gonna focus on the bottom three strings, the root, third, and fifth of the G major. Now we go to our sixth chord, A minor, and I'm gonna play another root position chord, but I'm gonna voice it this way with the root minor third and fifth. And then for my F major, I'm gonna go to another root position chord, no inversion, but I'm gonna voice it this way, root third and fifth. Now, why would you wanna do this? Let's say I was playing with another guitar player and they were playing the chords or the melody up high and I wanted to fill out the lower position of the arrangement, I could use these inversions and these voicings lower uh, to add some more bass and some more warmth to our arrangement. Now what if we go the opposite way? Instead of going low, we go higher in the voicings. You could try something like this. There, all I'm doing is taking the triad voicings and I'm dropping the root notes. So I'm just focusing on the triads and the inversions themselves. And this can be a really useful way to fill out the top end, the high end of an arrangement, keeping things simple, some nice tightly clustered chord voicings on the upper end of the guitar fit really nicely in an arrangement or a mix. Now for level three, we're gonna spice things up a little bit. Let's say you were a lead guitar player and you wanted to outline what was already happening with the piano or another guitar. You wanted to kind of embellish. Maybe instead of playing the chords themselves, you just wanna float on top. I really like using sixth voicings for this, like uh And for level four, get creative and apply what you've learned. I get asked a lot here on this channel, why should I learn theory? I've never needed theory before. I've been playing for 10 years, 20 years, whatever, and I don't feel like music theory is all that important to me. And I understand where that's coming from. I also understand the point of view that some people have of 
music theory hindering their creativity. I actually felt like that for a little while once I graduated music school. I felt that in order for me to play something good, it had to be complex and I had to have all these theoretical reasons for playing what I was playing. But the older I've gotten and the more experience I've gained, I've learned that theory is just a way of communicating ideas and it's a way of helping you get your creative ideas out faster. I'm sure you could figure a lot of this stuff out by ear over time. You just stumble into ideas. In fact, a lot of things I've learned over the years have been learned that way, just sort of stumbling into them. But I think learning and understanding some of the theory behind your favorite songs will really help you unlock your abilities as a player and your creativity. Once you have those ideas, those sounds in your head and you know how to put them on the fretboard and get them out, it makes for a really great experience as a musician. So there you go. That's how to really learn any song. Let me know what you thought about today's video in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe while you're down there. Don't forget, you can get 30% off of my video course, Fretboard Fundamentals, via the link in the description box down below. If you wanna get a little bit deeper into the subjects that we covered in today's video, that's the video course to check out. Also, if you wanna support the channel, you can check out some of the affiliate links that I have down there as well. If you buy something through one of those links, I earn a small commission, which allows me to continue to make these videos, and I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Rhett Scholl, and remember, there is no plan B.